Welcome back. While we're sheltering in place, let's look again at the affirmative defense of self-defense. Not every actor who uses self-defensive force can raise this defense. The defendant who asserts the defense wants to widen the context for the fact finder to include facts about the victim's conduct as perceived by the defendant. But the prosecution can also widen the context by showing that the defendant did not need to use force. The defendant had alternatives, lesser force or no use of force at all. Where that happens, the defendant can be deprived of what otherwise might be a viable defense. One instance of this is the so-called retreat doctrine, and we see it in play in the case of State versus Abbott. The facts of Abbott are confusing and messy, to say the least. The court's opinion focuses on the jury instruction on a defendant's duty to retreat before resorting to deadly force. Note that the retreat doctrine comes into play only when the defendant has resorted to the use of deadly force. A defendant may stand her ground and use non-deadly force all day long, if otherwise justified. To put it differently, suppose a defendant reasonably perceives a threat of unlawful force and reasonably believes she has only three options. Suffer the unlawful force, retreat to avoid the unlawful force, or stand her ground and use non-deadly force. She may always stand her ground and use non-deadly force. No issue of retreat arises unless she uses deadly instead of non-deadly force. Thus, it is an oversimplification to say that self-defense is a doctrine of necessity. One may use non-deadly force to resist an unlawful threat, even if one could avoid the use of force altogether by quitting the scene. Deadly force, however, is different. Different jurisdictions take different positions. Under the so-called American rule, a.k.a. the true man rule, an actor may use deadly force rather than retreat. The idea is that it is unmanly to retreat from a deadly threat. A curious idea we might think today. And if manliness is so important, wouldn't a true man resist deadly force with non-deadly force? The American rule rejects the earlier established so-called English rule. Before resorting to deadly force, the defendant must have his back to the wall. The English are notorious weenies, as certain American courts clearly saw, but not all. The drafters of the Model Penal Code rejected the American rule. Penal Code Section 3.042b provides, the use of deadly force is not justifiable if the actor knows that he can avoid the necessity of using such force with complete safety by retreating. Notice again that retreating is only required if the defendant used deadly force. Moreover, retreat is required only if the defendant knows it can be done in complete safety. This means that even the defendant who negligently believes retreat is risky is nonetheless privileged to stand his ground. So the model penal code retreat doctrine is much friendlier to defendants than the English rule. The model penal code also imports a well-established exception built into the English rule, the so-called castle exception. A defendant need never retreat from his or her residence. Rather, deadly force may be used to avoid a deadly threat, even if the defendant knows that a completely safe retreat is open. This implies that deadly force may be used in situations in which we may think it should be discouraged. For example, consider this domestic dispute. The wife threatens to split her husband's skull open with the meat cleaver she is wielding. The husband pulls out his pearl-handled Colt 45, but this serves only to enrage his wife further. She advances. The husband now has three options. Stay put and risk having his head split open. Two, run outside, hop in his car and escape, 
as he knows he can do in complete safety, or shoot his wife. Despite the fact that the husband knows he can avoid the need to use deadly force by retreating in complete safety, the model penal code does not require the husband to retreat. At least one court rejects the castle exception in the case of cohabitants. The overall trend in the U.S., however, is a picture of legislative expansion of the American rule and the castle exception to the English rule. In fact, the model penal code itself extends the castle exception to the workplace. A defendant need not flee her workplace unless she knows her assailant is a co-worker there. I know none of this makes sheltering in place any more appealing to you. Stay safe.